Hello everyone, let's start um, the leadership which de defines what is a leader, what are the leadership characteristics, what a leader should do. Um, this is a topic which comes under organizational behavior and in this chapter we are going to deal with what are the leadership theories and styles. So um, first let's just discuss what is a leader or who is a leader. As per the Oxford and Cambridge Dictionary, there are two definitions for the leader. One is the person who leads or commands a group, organization or a country. Um, the second one is a person in control of a group, country or situation. So there are two distinct factors we need to look into. That's a leader who commands and who is in control. So these are the two basic characteristics that we find in a leader. He commands and control. Control can be done in many factors that we are going to deal in, that we are going to discuss in detail in the next chapters. So what are the traits of successful leader? One is adaptability. How can a leader adapt to the conditions or the environment ahead of him? Achievement oriented, of course there must be an achievement, there must be a target. Then assertive, that's one thing that I, I should uh, um, enhance because being assertive is different from being abusive. Uh, you cannot abuse your subordinates but you have to be assertive to get things done. Cooperative, dependable and persistent. Persistence in the sense means the drive to achieve success. Um, the skills that is needed are intelligence, of course there must be a certain level of intelligence for doing some work. Um, conceptually skilled, that means the concepts which is at hand, the concept which is presented before you, that must be having, the leader must be having the skills for that matter. Then he must be diplomatic, diplomatic means you should not, like the same case, being assertive. So diplomatic in one sense is something related to being assertive. Diplomatic actually means you have to be, you cannot buy us. Um, tactful, there must be some kind of tactics. A good speaker and he must adhere to the social norms. That means for example, um, if you take the condition in the case of India, whenever an elderly person comes to your room, you actually stand up, you don't sit down. Um, whereas if you go to Western countries, um, if they are in a meeting, they won't stand up even if the CEO of the company comes in, they just sit. Even in colleges you can see that even the professor comes in, um, they sit. It's, it's not mandatory that you need to stand. So that is social norms. The leader must adhere to the social environment and the social conditions present in that particular organization. Now let's um, talk about leadership. Um, what is leadership? It's a process of influencing group activities towards the accomplishment of goals in a given situation. That means influence. Remember command and control of the leader. So that's influencing group activities. So why he is influencing the group activities is to the accomplishment of the goals. The process of influencing the behavior of others to work willingly, please underline these words, work willingly. You cannot force people to work. That means it becomes a dictatorship. You cannot do that in an organization. To work willingly and enthusiastically for achieving predetermined goals. Again, goals is important. Um, Roberts, Tenenbaum and all, they have defined leadership is interpersonal influence exercised in a situation and directed through communication process towards the attainment of a specified goal or goals. So the exercise in a situation, the personal influence is being exercised in a situation and directed through communication. Communication is a must. Without proper communication, a leader or the leadership cannot achieve its targets. George R. Terry, he has defined leadership as essentially a continuous process of influencing behavior. A leader breathes life into the group and motivates it towards goals. You might have seen in so many movies like Saving Private Ryan or maybe um, some other movies, maybe for example Braveheart. Um, when Scotland was in chaos, um, this guy comes in, the leader comes in and he um, makes them work together. The kingdom, together they work to achieve freedom. So that's the, one of the definitions 
Then recent definition, which is very recent, just come up regarding leadership, is the process of influencing and supporting others to work enthusiastically towards achieving objectives. So if you look into the three um, definitions, three or four definitions defined before, you can see that the recent definition is a combination of all the three or four definitions together. Now let's come to the leadership theories. What are the basic theories or the other theories that you need to understand before we start leadership and leaders? Um, the theories are straight theory, behavioral theory, contingency theory, path goal leadership, group and exchange theory, transformational theory, charismatic leadership theory. We're going to discuss that in detail. First of all, let's talk about trait theory, which has been um, going on for ages, which is one of the oldest theories. Um, it's based on personal qualities and characteristics that differentiate leaders from non-leaders. They are personal qualities. Please underline the words personal qualities and characteristics. It is an outcome of research and study conducted on world leaders. It takes into account physiological, that means height, weight, etc., demographic, age, education, intelligence, social, task-related factors. Results were often cloudier. Now, why we White says that results were often cloudier? Because it takes into account physiological, demographic, intelligence, social, task-related factors, etc. Some of the cases we can see that even if a person doesn't, doesn't possess these physiological factors, say for example, Hitler, Adolf Hitler, he, had not, he was not that much of a big of a man, but still he did unite Germany during chaotic times. Then demographic, age, education, etc. Um, if you take into Hindu scriptures in the olden ages, you can see that even small child brings wisdom to the elderly people. So age also comes into picture. Results were often cloudier because of these reasons. Because it's not, uh, we cannot draw that in a graph. We cannot be conclusive that these are the factors. If a person having much height becomes a leader, if a person having big weight becomes a leader, we cannot. Um, consolidate all of that matters. So that's why it said results were often cloudier. Only well, intelligence seemed to be consistent. So in all these factors, intelligence is the only term that has become consistent. Research concluded that the leader was more intelligent than the average of the group being led, but interestingly, the leader is not the brightest in the group. So a leader doesn't have to be that much of a bright student. Right, for example, even if, uh, if you go, if you take your classes, your classrooms, um, a leader might not be the best person who has scored the best marks. It might be a different guy. So that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons that came up, one of the factors that came up when the research was conducted. Recent studies have come up with big five personality traits. So when, when the researchers did some work, they come up with five big personality traits. These are the things that you can generally find in a leader. First one is extroversion, being assertive and sociable. That means extroversion means like, um, if you take the English term, introvert and extrovert. Introvert means into, I am concerned about myself. Extrovert means I am concerned about others as well. So extroversion becomes assertive and he's sociable. Sociable means he's outgoing personality. Um, consciousness, that means measure of reliability, organized and he's dependable. A leader must always be dependable. We have a saying that a leader leads by example. So that he has to be, he has to be dependable. He fights from the front. Openness to experience, creative, curious, artistically sensitive. Openness to experience means, say for example, um, if you be the manager of one organization and a new guy comes in, has got much more talent, has got much more education than you, your ego shouldn't work in the way. You should accommodate that person because, because of that person's expertise, your project might be finished before the time. So he should be openness to experience. 
neuroticism that means emotional stability calm and self confident um, neuro often means your neurons the brain um, cells the transformation of knowledge the transformation of ideas the transformation of information which has been passed through the brains that neuro so neuroticism means he is emotional stability calm self confident for example if you are working in an it sector there is a project that needs to be completed in maybe three days and your and your boss is coming in and saying that you have to finish that in three days otherwise the entire company's uh, profit or entire company structure will collapse so that's a crisis situation during that crisis you must be having emotional stability you cannot um, get excited you cannot get worried you have to have a stability then being calm in a group if you are working as a manager there are 10 or 15 people under you so when a crisis arises of course when people come together there will be crisis so you have to remain calm